Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing something really cool with WLED. I'm going to be showing you that, but, but first of all, I do want to thank Alatove LED for um, helping me out with this project a little bit. Um, they were super nice to work with and we'll get into that more later, but uh, let me show you what I'm doing with WLED. So this Christmas, I'm helping a church out with their stage, and I was able to work with Alatove LED to get some cool LED lights for their garland um, and for some other products I'll show you here soon. But let's take a look closer at the LEDs. So these are WS2811 LED strips with five volts on them, um, and I'm running them from a WLED controller in this custom case that I built. Um, I got it from Amazon, I drilled it out, put the wires through, and I'm also running Ethernet on this one. Um, I will eventually figure out how to get Ethernet all the way up because this truss will actually be all the way up there. Um, I'll get to there eventually, but um, you can see that these lights look very nice and I'll show more shots of the lights later on, but um, I just got most of these on. But anyways, this is all running from WLED and specifically Entec ELM Light Mapper software. Um, this church has a license for it, I believe, um, and uh, it's running really well using SACN or streaming ACN that is going over the network to the WLED controller. And all that is doing is essentially converting the DMX data over the network. It's converting that out into ethernet that the LED controller can see and um, then process into SPI or um, just the protocol that these LEDs use to transmit and send data through them. Uh, they're all daisy chained together. So they're technically, they all address each other automatically. Um, that's kind of how the protocol works. So. Uh, these lights all work together nicely. Um, these lights um, in Entech Light Mapper, these all take three channels each, which means we are using, um, if I do the math here, we are using 864 DMX channels um, or a few uh, universes to run these things. Let me show you what Entech ELM looks like. Okay, so this is what Entech ELM Light Mapper looks like. So we've got the LED strips here at the top of our screen um, to kind of to match where they actually will be in person. Um, so I could add other LEDs and kind of just map them in um, and play a video across all of them. We're outputting streaming ACN universe um, 160 channel one and 160 channel 433 um, for each of the ones respectively. If we go back to live here, you'll see we do have a ton of media um, already in our player. Uh, this is what you can use to play the media on W. This is what you can use to play the media um, onto the LEDs. So if I select this video file, you'll see that not only is it showing in the preview, but it's actually showing on the LEDs as well. Welcome back to the stage redesign. This is day two. Uh, I made some more progress. I moved a lot of lights around, actual DMX lights. Um, but I want to take a look at the next set of LEDs that I'm going to put on the stage and we'll see what they look like in the packaging. So I just want to briefly overview kind of what these look like. So these are WS2811 5 volt LEDs. Um, these are in 50 um, piece or 50 LED strands and we have 10 strands in each bag. I got two bags and um, they will be going obviously on the stage. So the plan is to put some LEDs across here, across this bar um, right there on the stage as well as um, the back bar right there. So in terms of this one up here, there's actually no ethernet on this truss, which is kind of an issue. Um, WLED works on Wi-Fi, um, but I've had a lot better luck running it on ethernet. So I'm actually, so I actually ran an ethernet cable all the way through the top of the truss um, that goes all the way down here. There's a DMX um, kind of device up here that outputs DMX, it takes in um, ethernet, outputs DMX. Um, it's kind of just a DMX node. I'm hoping that with that DMX node, I'm able to pull that out of the wall, plug the ethernet into this cable, and then go in the back room and kind of repatch a few things and hopefully get that into the standard network. Day three of working on this, I have gotten to an interesting spot and I want to show you kind of how flexible these LEDs are. So I'm wrapping the LED strips around this bar right here. And as you'll see, I am pretty much out of LEDs from here on. And this typically is an issue because if it's a pre-made LED strip, typically you can't kind of add on to them with shorter amounts. You'd have to do a full another strip. And I'm actually completely out of all the strips that Alatov was able to um, help me out with. So what I'm going to do is since I have one full strip left here, now obviously the strip is not still up, but it'll be the same amount of strips for both sides. I'm going to actually cut this one in half and then I'm going to solder a connector onto that that can function as its own LED strip. So that's why WS2811 strips are really sweet and 2812 because you can essentially cut them up, solder them at any point, and the LEDs will automatically, using the driver chip inside of them, they'll automatically reassign themselves. That way you can add on to it or um, kind of remove strips and 
kind of cut and paste wherever you want. So that's what I'm going to do exactly here. I'm going to essentially um, probably count and stop at 25 LEDs and cut it there. That way both sides are even. Um, but then I'm going to take the LED strip, put one side up here, take the other one back to the office, uh, solder that thing up, put the connector on it, and then I will finish on this side of the stage with the other strip. Um, you'll see on this side, I'm actually wrapping them fully around the bar. This side, I was just tying them up. This side looks a lot better than that side, obviously, so that's why I'm going with this route. Okay, so I'm now up on a ladder, and I did splice this strip together, so I put 25 LEDs kind of as an extension on here, but I also did a power supply that you can see right here. Power supply is directly wired into power, and it is actually injecting through the end of the strip. So this is actually getting, um, it's fixing kind of the voltage drop problem that a lot of these five volt LEDs have, which is at the end of the strip, by the time the wire gets all the way down there and the power gets all the way down to the end, uh, they lose a lot of their voltage due to how thin the gauge of wire is. So by injecting power at the end, it'll actually kind of help offset that a little bit and provide a little more power to the LED strip in general. So it will allow it to get brighter and not lose any light quality. So typically on these strips, if you run them at full brightness white without any kind of like power injection, you'll get some kind of issue like you're seeing right here. So the LEDs will actually turn kind of orange-ish because they don't have enough power to run them. Now in comparison, you'll see that this strip does not turn orange at the end. This is all white throughout the entire strip. And this is because I'm injecting power at the end. So you'll see kind of even here at the end, you'll see it gets a little oranger. Um, typically you can run one to two strips kind of on one power injection. So like I'm injecting right here from the middle so I can get away with just um, power from the middle for like the first strip here. But as soon as we get to the third strip right there, you kind of want to inject power a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do. So I made the LED strip that I kind of cut up like I just talked about. I've got the LED strip here and I will be essentially adding this on to the end but then after this strip, I will inject back to the rest of the strip. So um, the power supply that I'm going to add is going to power that strip specifically, but also a bunch of the other LEDs, like however it works out. Um, the nice thing about DC voltage is you can kind of add to it whenever you need to, um, as long as they're pretty similar power supplies. So I'm using Alito power supplies for all of these. Um, and first of all, these Alito power supplies are really great. Um, this one has been around for absolute years and it's been rock solid. So great job, Alito. They did not tell me to say that because I did not order these from them, but their power supplies are also fantastic. So I'm going to hop back up on the ladder, put that strip up, and I'm gonna show you kind of what it looks like um, when it's done. All right, so now that we've got the LED strip on and power injected, I do want to do a quick demonstration though on the power injection. So if I unplug this, you'll see the strip goes back to that orange color I was kind of talking about earlier. And it kind of does for a little bit longer as well on the strip, but you'll see if I plug it back in, the strip goes back to that white that we all know and love. So. Um, that is just an example of why power injection is important in these LEDs. Um, it'll also increase the lifespan of them. If you're not power injecting and they are running on lower voltages forever, um, it is not great for the LED strip. So it's important to correctly power inject when you need to.